Today, we are going to be taking a look at the latest DV5 feature called preset-based design. Is it good? Is it going to enhance our workflow? Let's find out. So here I've just added all these modules on my page and I want to see how this is going to work. So I know for a fact that I'm going to need a bit of padding here. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to go into my settings. Next, over here, I'm now going to add some padding. So I'm going to come over here to design. Now we can see that every time we hover over here, there is now this little icon here. This means that we can add a group preset. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to now go into spacing because this is where I want to add my padding. So I'm going to start off by adding two RAM all sides. Okay, so now that I have my two RAM spacing all sides, I mean, this is pretty cool. The next step now is to save this preset because I want to use it again on other areas. So if I click here now on this little icon, I can now say new preset from current styles. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and I'm going, oops, I think it chose spacing too. Anyway, I'm going to click on this gear icon and I'm going to name this padding or small, padding small. Okay, so the next step now, let me just move myself here out of the way. The next step now is to save this preset. Okay, so while I'm here, I know for a fact that I'm going to need another padding setting. So I might as well go in and do that. So this time I want a four RAM. So I'm going to apply this to all the sides as well, like just like how I did it. Okay, great. Now over here on my padding, I'm gonna click and then create a new style based on current styles. Let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm gonna call this padding medium. Okay, great, so now I've saved the preset. So I have now these two settings. Let's test and see if this is going to work now. So let's say I head over to this one here. If I go to design, spacing, and I come over here, if I choose padding small, this should work. And sure enough, it is working. So, so far so good. I like the fact that I can just go in and predefine my styles, or should I say my presets, and it applies pretty much across. Now this has been happening on the blurbs. Let's see if this is going to work now on my counter here. So I'm gonna click again, go to design, then I'm gonna head over to spacing, click on this gear icon, and then I'm gonna go for medium. And sure enough, it is working. This is really cool. All right, so let's take this a step further and let's try something different here. So this time I want to add a border radius. So again, I'm gonna come over here to border. So it doesn't matter what item I'm working on. So this time I'm working on my countdown timer here. So on the border radius, I'm going to go with, let's say one rem, okay? So we can see here it's distinct. I can really see that there's a difference here. So with that selected now, I wanna go in and add a new preset from current styles. So I'm gonna to go to border two and I'm gonna call this border small. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go all the way down here and save this preset. Okay, now let's try and apply it here. So I'm gonna come again, go to design. And then if I go to border, and click here, choose my border S, and sure enough, it's showing. I know it's not very clear, but it is definitely showing. So this really got me thinking. I can really go and add all my sizes, my borders, my spacing, and all of that, define them, and pretty much use them whenever I need. So let's say now, because right now I've chosen a border, right? Let's say I want to add a, a one pixel border around my rounded corners. How does that work? because it is on the same setting. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try it on this one here since this one here doesn't have any styles to it. Go to design and then I'm gonna to go to border. And this time I'm going to go to border width, okay? And then I'm gonna choose my color. So I'm just gonna go with something subtle like that. And with that selected, it's solid here, which is great. I am now going to create a new preset. So I'm gonna come over here to border and then I'm gonna say new preset from current styles. Okay, so this, I don't know why it snaps out of that. Maybe it's a bug, I'm not sure. But anyway, let me go back in and what was it called again? Is it this one? I think so. Anyway, I'm gonna click on this gear icon and I'm gonna say one pixel border. Anyway, I'm just gonna call it border one. Excellent, now I can go ahead and save this. Okay, great. So now that I have this, let's see now how it applies if I need to add it onto an existing item here. So I'm gonna go in and select that, come over here to design. And now I wanna to go to border. So I'm gonna come over here, 
Now the question is, how do I apply it? Because I already have a style here. So let's go ahead and say border one. Now, do you see what the problem is? It has taken away now my rounded corners and added my border which is a bit weird. So we need to find a workaround. And I'm glad you're watching this with me here because these are the sort of things that you might a problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and define my radius. So let's say one rem. I think that's what we used before. So with this now, I'm going to create a new preset. So I'm gonna come over here and say new preset, okay? So I'm going to say, okay, it snapped again. So I'm going to call this radius plus border. How about that? Okay, so that's going to be my preset radius plus border. And this is going to be small. So let's add an S at the end. In fact, maybe add the S first and then one to let us know that this is one pixel. Okay, so with that now, I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, great. So I want to now, oh, something happened here. How come it wasn't applied? This is strange. Anyway. So while we have this selected, I'm going to come back into here and I'm going to go now into my settings and make sure that I select the border like that and then select the color as well by doing that. Okay, so with that now, I'm now going to update this one here that I've just created by clicking on this gear icon and then I'm going to scroll down and say yes. Okay, I think now it's sorted. So here I don't have the rounded corners, but I have the border. But now if I want to go in and add that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to border. So instead of going here, notice that I'm clicking here on the styles or the preset. Then I'm going to select that and sure enough, it is working. So this is really, really exciting. I like the fact that you can start defining different areas as you're building your site. Now let's look for another module that we haven't used yet and see how that's gonna work. So let's look for, let's say, we want something that's plain. So let's go with accordion. Do we have an accordion? Yep, right there. Okay, great. So we have an accordion here. So let's see if our style that we've just created can be applied onto this. So I'm gonna click here, I mean on the whole thing like that. And then I'm gonna go to design and then I'm gonna go to my border, click here. And I want the border radius plus that little border thingy. So I'm gonna select that, but something happened. The text went light. I don't know why, but this has now applied, which is really cool. So I need to find out why my text here changed. So if I go out of here, let's see if I go to just normal border. Yes, normal border is working. Okay, that's strange. It could be that there was something I was working on that triggered this. So let's go back to design here and see where else we have maybe body text here. Let's go in and see. Okay, I think I have my body text here. I was playing around with this earlier on. So I need to go in and fix that. So with our body text here, uh, I need to give it some styling. So I'm gonna go into the first one here. Okay, so the first body text. So I'm gonna call this body text. Okay, so this one here is going to be light and then I'm gonna choose my color right here like that. And then let's update this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save preset, okay? Next, I want to create another one, but this time it's going to be dark, so with that selected, we're going to go into our body text here, but I'm going to go to the, to the second one. And then I'm going to click on this gear icon and choose a darker color. Well, now the strange thing here is it's not changing in here. I don't know why. Anyway, I'll change this to a darker color and I'm going to call this body text D for dark. Okay, let's save this preset. Okay, so still no change. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go in manually and find out what's happening. Oh, you know what's happening? I was actually supposed to go into this item here. Anyway, that was my mistake. I was supposed to go into the actual accordion. And when I came in here now, it was very easy for me to go in and choose my style. So you can see here, this one here is dark. And if I select this one here, it's gonna go light, okay? So that's an easy fix. I thought there was a bug. Anyway, so now with that, let's head over back to the actual complete accordion like that. And then we are now going to go in and go into design. And this time we're gonna go into border and we're going to choose our border style. So you can see now I have my rounded corners, which is fantastic. All right, so the question now is, 
Can we only do this on these modules alone or this is something that we can also apply to our sections? So that's something that we're going to do in a moment. But before we do that, I just like to come over here and try it one more time by coming over here to design and adding my border. So I'm going to go in here to my group presets and I'm going to choose this one right here without the without the pixels. OK, great. So over here, I noticed that my text here has gone as well. So I need to go in here, go to design. And then I'm going to go into body text and change this. So we're going to go with dark. And now you can see it's now showing. And if I need to add my border, I can just, while it's selected, I can come over here to border. And then I'm still used to designing it the old way where I have to do it manually. Anyway, I have to come over here and then I can choose border small plus one pixel. Boom. And now we have consistency. Look at that. We have consistency everywhere. So the good thing about this now is let's say, I want to change my border width for some reason. I can just come over here, go into this border right here, and then I can now increase the size. So I can just go like that, and now it's on two, right? Hopefully, this is now updated on the other two. And sure enough, it has. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So this is really, really powerful. We have one central place now to go in and make these changes. So even if I want to change the color, I can just come over here and look at that. All of them are updating, okay? So at any point, you can go in and change the size or the color of this item. And once that's done, you can just click on Save Preset. Okay, great. Now let's, took, let's take a look at our sections. Can we do something with our sections? So usually when I design, I like separating my sections with a light color and a darker color. So let's see if we can do that. So right now I'm gonna go into my section settings, go to background. So at the moment I've added a lighter color. I mean, normally it's white like that, but I'm going to now add a lighter color. Okay, so with that light color added, how about I make that into a preset? So we're going to come over here to the top and we are going now to say new preset from current styles. Boom. Okay. So this one here is going to be called section light BG. Okay. So now that I have this, I can now save this. So there we go. I'm going to save it right here at the bottom and that's done. Okay. So we're now, when I now create a new section like that, notice that it comes in white. In fact, let me just add my column here. So it comes in as a normal white color, but if I want to change it, let's see if our preset now works. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, come over here to my default settings and then choose light background and boom, just like that, it's working. And if I want to remove that, I can just choose that one. So I can also do this by choosing a darker color as well. Now let's try something different. So let's say I want to add section padding. So let's head over now to design spacing and I'm going to add let's say 10% so I'm going to do that both at the top and the bottom okay so now with that I would like to set my sizes for my padding sections so I'm going to start off with the the first one here which is new preset from current styles okay and with that I'm going to call this 10% okay so with that now I'm just going to save my preset like that and we're good. All right. So now I have 10% and I've also have the light background, but these are two separate items. So let's say I delete that and I'm, I'm now designing. In fact, let's get rid of this. So let's say we're designing now and I want to add a new section. I'm going to start off with a regular single column. And in this column here, let's add a heading. Okay. So we have our heading here. And I would like this now to have a background color. So I'm going to come over here. Notice that we have a group preset. So now I can go ahead and choose light. Boom, just like that. And while I'm here, I want to see now if I can add the padding, the 10%. So let's see. So right now it's not going to be here because this is my background colors. I would have now to come to the top here and select 10%. And just like that, I have my 10% and I also have my background. Okay, let's move on to another section. So let's say I go into a regular section here, but this time I want this white. Let's add another heading here, okay? So this time it's white, but I want to add 10%. I can just come over here to the top and then, oops, make sure you, make sure you select the section itself. And then I can come over here, choose my 10% padding. And now this is a an actual proper workflow. I really, really like this. So... 
as you can see, these presets, they're they are stacked. So I can go in and choose pretty much what I want as I'm going through this. But one thing that you have to remember here is this is not a complete design. So if I save this preset, it doesn't mean that it's also going to save the contents of this heading. Okay, because these have their own settings. So look at it more like the presets are going into sort of like customize each individual items. So let's say it's a specific module like a blurb. It goes in and puts in those settings for the blurbs or the sections or the rows or each and every item. But when it comes now to, let's say, the complete section here, if I wanted to save this whole thing as a preset, maybe I've designed the whole thing. Perhaps maybe I've even added a button here, for example. It won't save the whole thing as a, as a preset. For me to use the whole section like this as a preset, okay? You just have to add all the items in individually, and that's how it works. So my thoughts on this so far, this is a fantastic addition to... Divi, it is really good. I can, I mean, it's really good. And I can see how this is going to enhance our workflow. However, I'm a bit confused. A few weeks ago, Nick made a video talking about the future items that are going to, or future features that are going to be added onto Divi 5. And one of the features was the sizes. I mean, the different scaling and sizes like clamp and so on. That is really good because right now we cannot have typography because if I come over here to text and let's say I go to sizing, in fact, I need the text module. So let's go to this one here anyway. So if I go to text and then I go to the heading here, and let's say I want to go into sizing. All I have here is our pixels, EMs, and so on. But I don't have the advanced one like clamp. So this is this feature is actually coming. coming. So the confusion here is if we are going to be getting variables, which he mentioned that they were going to be coming, then isn't it better to create our variables? And then as we're designing, we would come over here and then choose the variable. And then that just gets applied to this. So if we need to make any changes, then we would go to our variables and then just make the changes there and the variables or the changes are going to be applied across the whole website. This is what I don't understand or don't get. Isn't this like a duplication or maybe perhaps isn't this going to cause confusion? Because this is a fantastic feature, by the way. I really like this. But with the variables now, there might be a clash. So for all you DV designers out there, and if you've tried this out, let me know what you think in the comments box below. And if there's anyone from the Elegant Themes team working on these features, please let me know how this is going to work. The variables plus the advanced, what are they called? The advanced units, okay? If that's going to be introduced, isn't that going to pretty much make this irrelevant? I don't know. And something else I also like to add is if we are going to use the variables in the design process, then... I tend to lean more towards the variables than this option because there's more clicking and you really have to get used to it for you to really start enjoying it. But so far, so good. I love this addition because we can go into each and every item to make some changes. I know this is a quick video. I've just covered pretty much the, the surface, but I'm also going to be doing future tutorials going in deeper and